tuning in to Brand Plus TV. As always, dear viewer, it is a delight that you have chosen us and you're keeping us company. I am Undiro Ganga, bringing you up to speed with all the top stories making headlines today. And as you know, we're all about business. Here is a glance. Connected Kenya Summit 2018, technology in support of development. Inclusive education for children with disabilities, it's all or nothing. To appeal to the governors in the 43 counties where we are not piloting to continue to ensure system strengthening. To continue. Universal Healthcare Pilot Program kickoff, UHC getting closer. The 10th edition of the Connected Summit was officially opened today by Cabinet Secretary ICT Joe Musheru at the Bombers of Kenya with the theme of this year's event being Preserving Culture, Pioneering Innovation. Take a look. Apart from everybody, I declare the 2018 Connected Kenya event officially open. While officially opening the summit, ICT Cabinet Secretary Joe Musheru said it is important to use technology to tell African stories and while at it keep intact the authenticity of the African culture for the future generation. Where is our Mickey Mouse? Who is telling our story? Who shall carry our stories in the years to come? How can we leverage rapidly advancing technology to preserve and protect our culture and our languages. If more Kenyans heed the call to tell their stories, our culture would be upheld and preserved. Recently, a team from my ministry and the ICT authority documented the Yakute tribe in Laikipia County. The language has only seven surviving speakers, and without technology, the language would have disappeared. With technology, it should no longer be difficult for our young people to learn their mother tongues or to lose sight of their roots. We need to find innovative ways to positively deploy technology to collect, document, disseminate, and propagate the country's heritage, especially to the young generation. Atlantis CEO during his address equally noted that technology is no new front in Africa and it is time for its power to be harnessed in order to solve perpetual African problems. The stories told that man took his first. Atlantis Technologies for pioneering technology in Kenya and Africa as a whole. Our conviction that Africa presents the best market and platform for technology companies in Africa to build solutions to solve Africans' many problems. Our investment in technology, uh, from a solution delivery to manufacturing of hardware and software, has accelerated our growth in Uganda, Zambia, Malawi, Tanzania, from our very home, Kenya. And we are very proud Made in Kenya company. We are certain that with stakeholder engagements such as Connected 2018, and with such initiatives, we'll put Kenya in the map as a net exporter of technology solutions that are made here in Kenya or assembled in Kenya. However, for technology to pick up pace and begin serving Africa at an industrial scale that is of economic benefit, CEO Telcom Kenya said a couple of things need to be put into consideration. Whereas the ICT industry has achieved a lot already, in order to continue meeting current and future needs of Kenyans, address many challenges that the country faces, and deliver even more value to the economy, there has to be a shift. First, this calls for innovation within the industry in order to constantly deliver value to customers. We will only be able to realize economic benefits from the industry if we work towards enhancing physical and economic accessibility. Second, we will need to invest and deploy world-class cutting-edge technology. 
For instance, the world is moving towards 5G mobile technology. What are we, industry players and regulators, doing about this? Third, we have to keep with global best practice. The mobile industry is engaging the regulator on the formula of quality of service. And we look forward to arriving at a solution that will enhance the customer experience. He further added that to create a level playing field for all the ICT players, the issue of dominance by one player needs to be looked into and sorted with immediate effect. <laughs> for all this to succeed, there needs to be a competitive market environment in the Kenya telco sector. Today, the sector suffers from an imbalance with one player dominating the industry and no rules to establish a fair competitive market. There's urgent need for a competitive environment to encourage innovation and most importantly, give the consumer more choice and freedom. If this is not addressed, the industry will die. So let's all work together to make industry better for a better Kenya. Legislation equally plays a big role in the uptake and growth of the technology sector. To this end, Wilson Kisang, Chairperson Parliamentary ICT Committee, highlighted that there are two bills tabled in Parliament that will help streamline the sector. There are some who have been sent to represent. We have had a discussion with the Minister of ICT on uh, privacy, and data, pri privacy and data protection bill. It's an advanced stage. And I'll invite all of you, when the opportunity comes, when the bill comes to National Assembly, we'll give you an opportunity to give your views. I know some of you have already given out views. We'll give you more additional time so that we can see how we can make the law good for all of us. Secondly, we also have another law that is coming up, critical infrastructure. Most of you have raised your views, raised complaints about the county governments across Kenya. It's very difficult to lay fiber optic across because people have not, the governments, county government, have not come to realize that fiber is a critical infrastructure. They still believe water and electricity is critical, but not fiber. But soon we are coming up with a law to ensure we do some civic education so that uh, fiber optic is treated as critical as water, as electricity. The conference has previously borne great ideas such as Huduma Center and today the Huduma White Box was launched. With a kitty of 1 billion Kenyan shillings to fund entrepreneurs with brilliant ideas, will it be a success like Huduma Center? That's a wait and see. <music> Global statistics indicate that approximately 1 billion people have some form of disability with over 4 in every 5 persons living in developing countries. The Global Monitoring Report 2010 stated that an estimated 77 million children were excluded from education. A third were children with disabilities. Our field team was present at the Inclusive Education for Children with Disabilities event at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Nairobi and filed the following report. According to Charlotte McLean, Global Disability Advisor World Bank, inclusive education is integral to social inclusion, which is a very central feature in ending poverty and promoting prosperity. Inclusive education, as, you know, as we know, is, integ is integral to um, social inclusion. And social inclusion is a very central feature of the World Bank's twin goals of of um, ending extreme poverty and promoting shared prosperity. Approximately 1.7 million people in Kenya live with disability and the Kenya National Survey for Persons with Disabilities contend that only 39% of this population has attended a mainstream primary school and 9% has attended secondary school. Poverty and exclusion. Charlotte went on to highlight the main challenge facing people with disabilities pertaining education. 
I think it's also important for us to be mindful that persons with disabilities experience multidimensional poverty. And this kind of multidimensional poverty is amplified by systems that actively exclude people with disabilities because of their disability. And how does this, what does this look like? Well, it looks like people with disabilities being excluded from decision-making processes. Decision-making processes in their families, in their communities, in school management committees, and from the engagement of overall education stakeholders. So their voice is not part of the discussions around education. This needs to change. And from this report the Ministry of Education has several guidelines on the provision of special needs, the most recent ones being the free primary education policy. The key provision of the policy relates to the relevance and quality of education. Speaking at the event, Principal Secretary of Education, Dr. Richard Belio Kipsang, reiterated Kenya's commitment to the promotion of the rights of those with disabilities, especially in matters education. From the Kenyan, from the time Kenya ratified the Convention on Rights of Persons with Disability in 2008, and coming on of our constitution, our new constitution in 2010, the country has committed to promote to the promotion of disability rights in general and education in particular. Indeed, the ministry established a directorate to coordinate education services for learners with disability and to ensure that no single learner is left out. The PS highlighted how the government has strengthened the education assessment and the resource centers across the country. The government has also impacted on strengthening the education assessment and resource center across the country. Though I would want to mention that we have now at the tail end of finalizing a national and referral facility. We have just finished the structures, having invested more than 500 million shillings towards it. We are working with the private sector and other partners to ensure that this particular facility is adequately equipped to be able to identify and assist us in early assessment of our children. Joshua Josa, Education Specialist USAID in Washington, provided an approach on how to achieve inclusive education and also make the transition smooth. Teachers need to possess the skills and the knowledge in order to educate children coming into their classroom. Assessments need to be made. Entry points need to be identified and investments need to happen in the overall education system in order to make this transition a successful one so that mainstream schools and general education settings can accept students with disabilities. Um, presence of if development is to be achieved, all resources, human included, must be harnessed and that can only happen with quality and inclusive education. For Brand Plus TV Business News, I am Elsa Atienu. The government, as part of its Big Four agenda, seeks to attain universal health care coverage by 2022. This is no mean task, and with health being a devolved function, the county governments must be brought on board. To this end, the Ministry of Health today signed an MOU with four counties as part of the pilot program to achieve this goal. Our field team attended the sign-off and brings us the following details. Isiolo, Kisumu, Machakos and Nyeri counties are the four counties that have been earmarked for the pilot program. Cabinet Secretary Health Cecily Kariuki, who was at hand to sign off on the MOU with the county heads, noted that it will be a challenging road ahead, but one that was worth traveling. Today, as we sign the MOU with the four governors from Kisumu, Nyeri, uh, Machakos and Isiolo, it is not lost on us following the instructions given by His Excellency the President this morning that it will be a rewarding but very stretching exercise because we are learning but also you don't quite experiment with health. We must be able to be available for the patients. We must be able to avail the commodities that they require in the facilities in the pilot counties. We must be able to 
organize and work around our culture issues so that we actually are able to deliver. And I say we, effectively, it is the facilities being supervised by these governors. So we are aware that it's going to be stretching, it's going to be challenging, but it's also going to be exciting because, like has been indicated, we, are, we, need, we want to be part of the legacy program that helps in delivering health care to our people. The, element of cost. the CS went on to know the support programs that will run concurrently with the pilot to ensure its success. We have several interventions that will be running concurrently. One of the most critical ones which starts now is awareness raising of how the program is going to be rolled out, which is going to be sustained until the launch date. We will also be registering uh, the citizens in these four counties so that you can be able to then attach them to the facilities where they will be able to access a service. We will also be um, discussing with the other stakeholders who will be in one way or another be involved in the actual implementation and that will run on for the coming uh, one month. She also asked the other 43 counties not in the pilot phase to also set their house in order ahead of the program being scaled up countrywide. Although we will have some intensive activity in the four counties, it's for me to appeal to the governors in the 43 counties where we are not piloting to continue to ensure system strengthening, to continue to ensure that we have the requisite HR capabilities in those counties to ensure that we also continue to enroll those that are qualified for NHIF registration and there will be parallel campaign going on there to draw the numbers. Machakos County Governor Alfred Moto on his part emphasized the importance of the program and his belief in UHC. Uh, today is a great day because we've started a journey, a journey that is going to give our people some of the fruits of independence that we've been talking about for 50 years. Provision of health care is key for development of any country and any society. And our people at times have to choose between feeding their children or going to hospital and getting treated. Now we are starting a process in this pilot study to show that it is possible for Kenya to provide universal health care to all our citizens. I'll give you another one. The governor of Kisumu, Professor Nyang Nyongo, reiterated the importance of measuring performance. In other words, we must set for ourselves a time action plan uh, to ensure that within a certain period we shall see whether what we set out to do we are going to do. And Waziri Kariuki will elaborate on that. But also to make sure that we get specific outputs during that time period, that the output can be nothing other than access by our people to quality health care which will stop families from being impoverished as a result of high cost of care. With the pilot phase of the universal health care coverage officially a go, it is clear that health for all might just be a reality in our lifetime. We are hopeful that we will witness the program going to scale and attaining its goal. After all, a healthy nation is a working nation and a working nation is a prosperous one. Thank you, Thank you so much. Welcome back to the most comprehensive, exclusively business news bulletin in the country. Thank you for staying with us. Now on to some news on UNGA. The 29th Annual International Association Operative Millers of the Middle East and Africa region today convened at Morven Peak Hotel in Nairobi with their deliberations centering on the attainment of food security for the region. Our reporter Daisy Ombo attended day one of the event and filed the following report. Take a look. Transparency can be smart farms, transparent business practice can be DNA. The three-day conference that happens alternately between Middle East and Africa consists of management, technical, feed milling technology and trends, and trading sessions presented by international and national top-notch speakers gathers more than 600 delegates from 50 countries annually and up to 100 exhibiting companies. Very simple genetic test. Speaking to Ian Roberts, the chief technical officer at Bula AG, he outlined the need for having sustainable food value chains that will in turn feed 9 billion people by the year 2050. If we assume the population will be 9.8 billion globally in 2050, more than 2 billion of them 
will be in this area of the world. We have to ensure that we can sustainably feed these people. If you think that today that 25% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, 71% of the world's fresh water are used in agriculture, a third of the world's energy is used in food production, and a third of the world's food is lost or wasted. And at the same time, over 800 million people are hungry. We clearly have an imbalance in the way that we run the food value chains of today. Major changes that we have to make to the food industry and the food value. He continued to speak on the various things that would help improve chances of food security, key among them being banking on innovation. You have 40% of the population is less than 15 years of age. So everybody is a digital native in that group. And they're going to grow up understanding and using the digital tools and trusting the digital tools. On top of that, you've already got this wonderful example with M-Pesa of going directly into mobile payment systems. So the step to cryptocurrency, to blockchain utilization, is, is not an impossible step and it might be one that you're very well set up to manage here. So I, I'm extremely optimistic that you can embrace the latest innovations and implement them the African way faster than we would in Europe. The applications that I've ever seen. As the stakeholders of the conference push for the attainment of food security in the region, technology is being seen as the key enabler towards this end. With the knowledge transfer happening, food security for the country may just be closer than we think. For Brown Plus TV Business News, I am Daisy Wambua. Completely monitor a farm. You can monitor from satellite a four meter by four meter space. From the north to the south, Africa seems to be making rapid progress in social, political and economic spaces. Kenya this week is playing host to the 6th African Higher Education Week and Reforum Biannual Conference which promotes capacity building in agriculture under the theme Aligning African Universities to Accelerate Attainment of Africa's Agenda 2063. Our reporter Karari John Wombugo attended the opening ceremony, a day-long event and brings us more details. Take a look. Ruforam has a network of 105 universities drawn from 37 African countries. The conference has brought together over 900 delegates from academia, private sector, government development partners, students and farmers. The conference is hosted by the Kenyan government through the Ministry of Education and 12 Ruforam members, universities in Kenya. As a run-up to the official opening of the conference, Cabinet Secretary Education, Ambassador Amina Mohamed, chaired a ministerial roundtable at the University of Nairobi in the morning hours. I believe for us to truly engage on these important issues, we need to do the following. First, we need to expand access to higher education from the current less than 10% compared to a global average of 32% to guarantee greater and equal access to opportunities. Second, we need to increase research output and knowledge relevant for our own growth. Third, training must be made more relevant to, the current, to our current and future needs and with greater focus on production and entrepreneurship. Four, we must build capacity by ensuring that our universities and other training institutions have highly qualified and incentivized staff. Five, we need to explore closer collaboration in our education strategies across the continent and build stronger avenues for collaboration as well as build stronger and transformative universities. In a press briefing, the CS highlighted how critical the conference is to Kenya and the whole of Africa. But this meeting here today, ladies and gentlemen, is so critically important for the development of this continent, for the industrialization of this continent. Yeah? We cannot continue lagging behind. Right? Well, at the same time, knowing fully well that we actually have the potential to leapfrog across many, many sectors, yeah? Agriculture, key. We're not able to feed ourselves today. I was just talking about how much money we're spending, right, to import food from elsewhere. And yet, we have the most fertile land, yeah, across the globe. Why is that so? 
Let's address some of those things. How can we innovate? More university. Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture. Later on in the afternoon, Ruforum was officially opened at an event at KICC, where the keynote speaker, Her Excellency First Lady of the Republic of Uganda and Minister of Education and Sport, Janet Museveni, registered her disappointment on how Africa hasn't exploited the human capital. As you all are aware, Africa's participation in higher education as measured by higher education gross enrollment ratio is very low at 6.2% on average compared to the world average which is 34%. This means that human capacity development in Africa is lagging behind the rest of the world. Now, without high quality human capital the enormous natural resources God has endowed the African continent with continue to lack the most important capital, which is labor, to transform it for social economic development and prosperity of its people. The Ugandan First Lady went ahead to challenge the participants to support the African Agenda 2063. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to remind ourselves that Africa's Agenda 2063 compels us to keep at the forefront the knowledge that Africa must be a strong, resilient and influential global player and partner, which requires men and women who are ready to run the reform agenda with a passion to transform Africa through any program we set our minds to. If it is agriculture, then let's ask ourselves first why Africa cannot feed her population during good and bad times. Um, universities in CS Amina who read the president's speech, reiterated on how investing in agriculture is a promising venture. Agriculture is our wisest pursuit because it will in the end contribute most to, well, to real wealth, good morals, and happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, we can do better, we must do better. We can plan better, we can invest smarter, and we can expand our partnerships. It's a queen from Malawi. The event culminated with Ruforum Awards 2018 to individuals making impact on Africa's development agenda. The awardees included the former University of Nairobi Vice-Chancellor John Gishaga, who was recognized for his contribution in turning University of Nairobi into a center of excellence. Reporting for Bramplas TV, I am Karari John Wambugu. The African Women's Studies Center of the University of Nairobi today held a conference with the theme African Women's Journey Towards Gender Equality and Social Cultural Transformation. Our reporter Day Swambo attended the event and brings us the following story. So you can, you, can, you can make it as wide as, it, as you want, you can make it as... Speaking while officially opening the conference, the Principal Secretary Ministry of Public Service, Youth and Gender Affairs, Honorable Safina Kwekwe, pointed out that for a country's GDP to be consistent, then the effort for both men and women need to be equalized. <laughs> Where countries have made contributions, I mean, where countries have deliberately, by design, made sure that contributions of men and women is equally appreciated. You know the GDP growth, obviously, is always in the positive, and it, it doesn't ever plunge, regardless of the system, uh, political systems, regardless of uh, uh, the, what the, the world economy is or like. When you have a country that appreciates the contribution of men and women alike, boys and girls, then there's consistency in the GDP growth. So it makes economic sense for us to be able to invest in women and not just investing in them but investing in their growth.
The PS continued to state that her ministry is going to support the African Women Studies Center in the initiative to support women and young girls. As we speak now, we have a gender department that has uh, 140 uh, personnel within two years. We have a principal secretary responsible for gender affairs only. We have a commission that was established by the Constitution, which is the National Gender and Equality Commission. And we have pronouncements, both legal, through legal instruments and otherwise, that have ensured that it is mandatory for us not to do things as usual anymore, because not gender equality is a principle of good governance. It is a principle in the public service. We are yet to get to 100% as prescribed by the Constitution. But as, 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 as we speak now, I can say that we have made progress as Kenya. She did not fail to acknowledge the women who have made it in the national level politics and urged women to use them as mentors for them to be economically empowered. Center for Women Studies. We are having, for the very first time, women ministers, not being ministers for social services, uh, for things like what? They used to have local authorities. Uh, we used to have uh, ministers for, for women affairs. You know, that always belongs to a woman. We are having, for the very first time, a minister for defense, a woman, a minister for lands. And here in Kenya, we talk, talk about issues of land. It is either do or die. For the first time, we have a woman lands minister. We are having a woman minister who's in charge of foreign affairs and international trade. We are having a woman who's in charge of uh, education, both primar from, from primary all the way to tertiary. And we are having my minister who is in charge of public service, youth and gender affairs. Women are an integral part to the attainment of Africa's development agenda and the empowerment is a matter of urgency. For Brown Plus TV Business News, I am Daisy Wambua. Thank you. Thank you. Let us now take a look at how the markets performed today and here is a summary. Just a summary of how the markets performed, but for more in-depth analysis of the same, tune in tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for my next Big Bet with Brayton Derito and Karanji Daniel. Let's now take a look at the day's weather reports. That was it from our news desk tonight, but do make sure to tune in at 9 p.m. tomorrow for fresh serving of newsmaking headlines in the business world. Have a good night.